the Rainy River in the spring. It's a traditional destination for anglers. They're here for the sturgeon and walleyes, but it can also bring you snowstorms and all sorts of other surprises. I think it was a big good day. Anyway, all right, guys, go have fun. All right. All right, sounds good. See ya. Oh, gosh. Three guys, two dogs, way too much gear in a quarter ton. Yeah, I dropped my phone. I can't get out. Oh, God. Oh, God. We are at Outdoors again. We made it to Bidet. There it is right there. Dan's going in. David, what are you going to get here? I don't know stuff. Probably a little bit of everything. We got to get a few more jigs. Mostly going to target walleyes while we're up here. Uh, maybe sturgeon. We're going to bring some sturgeon gear kind of as a backup, but the fish are biting. We've heard some reports of some big fish already caught here this morning, so we're going to get some more gear, get to River Bend, unpack, get set up, and hit the rainy river in the morning. <laughs> the advice we've been giving is half ounce jigs, so we're going to pick up some of those, maybe some more plastics. Maybe some shiners, maybe some crawlers. I don't know, maybe a bunch of stuff. It's like Christmas in here. We're in the new cabin here at Riverbend. They just built this one last year. David, what do you think? Pretty sweet in here. Not bad, we're about to watch the wild game. There's probably about a 32 inch walleye right there. We can't get to him yet though. Soon. Morning of, first day, rainy river. Uh, from what we've been told, one access is open, but we want to go just check out all of them. So we're just leaving town here. We're going to jump into Timber Mill first. See how much ice is there, because I'm guessing there's a lot. There are four main accesses that people use in the spring on the Rainy River. Timber Mill, Vitus, Frontier, and Birchdale. The river flows from Rainy Lake to the east into Lake of the Woods to the west. And that's the direction that the landings open up. That can cause some major backups when that first access, Birchdale, opens up. Well, so right now we're just uh, trying to troll up the river just a little bit. We're going 0.3 miles an hour and uh, we wanted to go real slow anyway. I've got this live target paddle tail. It's a slow roll mullet, four inch variety. And Dan, what are you using over there? I call it the twitch tail. I think it's the purple variety with a, uh, a Northland 3 8 ounce deep V jig. And what are you doing with it? Well, right now I'm pitching it up there's kind of a little flat and some slack water up up towards shore. I'm pitching it up there and just kind of slowly twitching it back, hence the name Twitch Tail. Um, but before we were just dragging, dragging real slow, getting it to bottom, pulling it up six inches or so, let it drag, make sure you're always in contact with bottom, so you're dropping it back down, feeling bottom, and picking it back up. And now uh, those fish will thump it when they're ready to thump it. Right, on the board, live target. What do you got, Dan? Oh, just a chunky little walleye. To the river, to the river we go. Leave our worries on the shore and drift away. On the river, on the river we know. Sometimes the perfect words are never. Day one on the Rainy River went great. The weather cooperated, we caught some fish, and we did some pre-fishing for a two-day tournament that started tomorrow. It was all part of a celebration for the 500th episode of Sporting Journal Radio. All right, get the drawing. Come on, Ethan. Are you nervous? Okay. Are you nervous? All right. Don't look. No cheating. Green and blue up here. Spin a rock and watch the ricochet. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is Tuesday, April 5th, otherwise known as day one of the Fish Donkey Tournament. Scott, are you gonna win today? Oh God, yeah. We woke up to clouds, colder weather. We've got a pretty heavy east wind today. It's gonna blow 20, maybe gusting up to 25 or so. There's a, uh, some snow, some rain in the forecast. In fact, it's been snowing already here this morning. I'm gonna jump in the boat with Joe Henry and hit the river. It's gonna be a little brisk out there, but honestly, not not so bad. You've fished in weather like this before. Yeah, you know what, it's, uh, I, you know, I think we both kind of have ice fishing gear with, and yeah. basically what we're gonna be doing is, uh, you know, getting out there, and, and ideally, you know, there's a lot of spots to fish in the river. When you when you take your uh, GPS map up, whether you have Davionics or whatever you got in your hand, and pull up the rainy river and take a look at that 
structure. There is structure all over. And you don't have to be by boats to catch walleyes. Those walleyes will tell you what they want to be doing that day. So, you know, we're going to be looking for spots, but I'll tell you what, if we happen to find a spot that's just a little bit out of the wind and snow, that would certainly be conducive, wouldn't it? We were worried about the river even being open for this, and we got a little bit of hope just before the t- We were going to cancel the tournament. I had friends that were coming up here that canceled on 12. The river's not going to be open. Jamie was going to bring a four-wheeler and just ice fish the whole time, which we've been seeing a lot of people ice fishing, actually, too. But uh, the river opened up right before the tournament. We had beautiful weather on Monday. We fished before the tournament a little bit, pre-fishing. And and then it's just been opening up really fast, Joe. Everybody's pretty surprised how fast that Birchdale uh, access popped open. It was really kind of a cool story because Birchdale popped open, but what people didn't realize initially is there was a a sheet of ice bread that was down pressed to the bottom. So you couldn't just back a trailer up. There was still ice under the water. So what happened was when everybody came to fish, you had about uh, eight guys out there with chisels and saws used for, uh, you know, sawing a hole for spearing. And they were out there working on that ice chunk for about four hours. And uh, single-handedly, they uh, they got that baby out of there. They go fish the rainy. We got, uh, of course, Cooch County. We got uh, the highway to the county, the highway department. Everybody chips in, and we want to make it safe. They actually go in there with a backhoe, and they'll get that ice out of there best they can um, just to make things safer for anglers and get things rolling. I mean, I, I tell you what, not, not every county would do that, so I think all anglers are pretty darn appreciative. When we went and checked Frontier, you could see that a couple of guys had actually backed over the ice. Two, two boats had gone in, and uh, we did a little update from there, and then we got on the road to go to Birchdale. We actually passed them coming to work on it, and then we launched the boat, went up the river, and they had already finished it by the time we got there with the boat. Isn't that so, great? Yeah. That's good news. I'll tell you, to have two accesses open, but two boat ramps open, really disperses the traffic. And of course, with the snow and, and the, you know, the kind of the cold for a couple of days here, certainly traffic's down anyway. But I'll tell you, we got some good weather ahead of us. And, uh, you know, Brett, the word is there's some big females in the river, but not the number of big females that will be in about a week, I think. Yeah, yeah that's right. My, my tail got bit off. See, see the bite marks in that? And I had a twister tail on that, and the sucker got bit off. So they're short bite me. But you know what? We'll uh, we'll put that back down. I've been tipping this a little bit with a half a shiner, just just a little bit of scent on there. And I think that uh, I, I think it helps, but uh, maybe it's psychological more than anything. But hang on, Joe. I got a little snow on my lens. But uh, you know, pink and white, orange, chartreuse, boy, all bright colors for the stained water and the rainy river. They all can be good. Notice I got that glow in the dark jig too. I always like that one. Okay, so we've been, uh, we were jigging quite a bit, uh, jigging with some plastics, jigging with some shiners. I got uh, all kinds of snow all over my lens. And Joe suggested changing things up a little bit and uh, pulling some cranks. And Joe said, here, why don't you pull this crankbait right here? Here's what uh, Brett's getting on, by the way. Everyone wants to take a look at this lure right here. I'm just saying, gold, slakely woods, shallow diving crank behind a, uh, a three-way rig. And just like that, we released one fish and Joe's hooked up. I'll swing this one. Okay. But there you go. And you know, we uh, we were jigging and we weren't doing that great. A couple fish, you know, but you can see it's a snowstorm. I'm sure that's not helping us. But we started pulling cranks and we're catching fish. Now, we haven't gotten our big ones yet, but I'll tell you what, I would believe that we have as good a chance of catching a big fish on these cranks covering water, getting that reaction strength than we would jigging, especially when we don't, we're not on a big pile of fish in any one spot. Jigging is kind of the way to go. However, don't be afraid to pull cranks. We're going about one to 1.3 miles per hour up current. It's going into the current with these. We've got a three-way rig on. Maybe what I can do, Brett, I'm gonna let this fish go and I can show people what we're using here, is we're using a three-way rig. And what this is, you can see we got a three-way swivel here. We got, we got a dropper line to uh, about a two or three ounce weight here. That'll get us right to the bottom. And then we got our six feet of um, monofilament line with a shallow diving crankbait. Tight wobble crankbaits, and that's the kind that, you know, in this cold water they want. They want that tight wobble. They want to go kind of slow. Going upstream, you're going to have great action on these. You know, with that weight, we can drop that down in 15 feet of water like we're in the channel right now. We can also get that up to about five feet. We just cover the bottom with that thing. Real effective way to catch fish. What do you got going on here, Joe? I got another walleye on, Brett. Another eater. Ah, you know, this might be a soccer. Let's see. Oh, nice soccer. Look at that. <laughs> so he cooked, he brought some mallard dress. 
And the first night, this is about 1 a.m. He made some mallard breasts here while we were sitting here. And what did you season them with, Corey? The all, every possible seasoning I could find in the whole kitchen. Which all of it. Which was? Mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> so you just coated it in mayonnaise and it yeah. browned it up really nice and yep. Yep. the flavor traveled oh, right through, oil, right into oil. the meat. Made yeah. it real oil, succulent. Oil factor. <laughs> the only thing that we had. <laughs> all of it. Oh now we've got <laughs> catch of the day. The only thing we were legally allowed to keep today in the oven. Big old sucker. <laughs> Big old sucker. Whole plan was to leave the head attached, then I cut that son of a gun off, and then I was like, God dang it, now I gotta bring the head back into the house. So I scaled it, and I gutted it, and then I put it on a piece of tinfoil and put some butter on there. That's cream cheese, that's lemons, there's the head. If you're looking, it ain't cooking. Shut the oven, let's go, we gotta eat. <laughs> <laughs> This is your fourth serving? Fifth now. Fifth. It's delicious. Mm -mm -mm. So this is like a sucker cheek, sucker snout. More snout than cheek. <laughs> Nose area. Day two of the SJR 500. You know, when we planned this tournament and this party, it was going off the day to the 500th show. So a lot of people wanted us to push this trip back, whatever, let the river open up a little bit more. River's open. In fact, today, on the way over here to the Frontier Landing, we watched open water past Clemenson. Now, yesterday, that was not open, so the river is opening up real fast. And it's snowing. There's wind gusts up to 60 miles an hour forecasted to the west of us, not here. At least I hope not, but here on the river you can tuck in out of the wind, so it's not so bad, but we're going fishing, man. There's big fish getting caught, lots of fish getting caught. This is beautiful. It's uh, not sunny, calm and 70, but fishing rarely is, so. River, you can always hide from that north, northwest wind in places too. It will, it don't have a wide open all the way from the lake, so it can't back up as much as it would in a normal situation. You know, usually that wind would blow it off the lake and back the river up, and you'd see it come up a foot here. Dragging a jig up river. Got Joe and you pulling uh, three ways with cranks, and I'm kind of long lining a jig right there. That's a pretty lethal jig on the, the river up here. A little spin on the bottom. Dropped a stinger hook on there. I didn't know about that on plastic, but this one didn't mind it. Did that because I had it popped a couple times and missed them, but didn't miss that one. We were fishing with Nicole Stone and her husband, and he got a 10 pounder, then he got another 10 pounder. I think he got another one too, and uh, I was right next to him. His wife was in the same boat, and I was like, What jig? What's, what do you got on there? And he showed me the jig, and I said, you got another one? And he said, no, but I said, where'd you get it? So we stopped at the bait shops that morning and told me what shop. I picked up the anchor, drove the boat 10 miles, walked another mile, and bought $25 <laughs> worth of those jigs, and that was what all the big ones came on. So I kind of believe in it, but you catch fish on what you believe in. All right, still not the fish that we're after here, but that is a nice chunky uh, walleye here in the Rainy River. We've been catching a lot of little ones, and uh, they're starting to get a little bit bigger, so that 34 is in here, guys. Looked like the rod was snagged, but I had it in my hand, and it kept bending over, and then finally kicked. Oh, I went in. I ain't got big. Oh, Joe, you got one. Got one huh? Better one, too. Oh, okay. Five kicks. What's yours doing? Might as well a better one. Oh, good. Well, there should be a big one here somewhere. I can just... I got a good one here. Yep. Oh, that's good fish, yep. Yep. Can you go the net? Oh, it's up. Got it, Brad. Is he up already? No, here, Brad. Here's the All right. 
their attention. <laughs> I went to a floating raft lot, number 11, chartreuse. Hey, nice fish. You win. <laughs> nice fish though, aren't they? Oh yeah. 20, 22 and a half. One hook underneath. Took the swat, missed it. But got him anyway. Probably 20. The 500 show begins now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in on this station. Oh, yeah! Oh, nice. that's a nice one. <laughs> Heck yeah. Chris is on the board. <laughs> Not bad. That's a good fish. That's your mom. Never seen my mom come fishing, and it was 30 degrees and snowing when we were questioning going fishing and my mom's like, yep, let's go. I, I'm not sitting in this cabin. Let's go. Yeah. We're going fishing. I got to catch another walleye. Well, thank you guys for coming up, of course. Uh, I appreciate it. And as I, as I posted on Facebook, I think one of my favorite pictures from this trip is going to be uh, you, Ron, my dad, uh, in, the back, in the back of the boat, not, not underneath the, the top where it's warm, but there he is, and he's just covered in snow. Like half, you're just shielding yourself from this, this snowstorm and you're just covered in snow out there. I was frozen stiff. <laughs> you couldn't move if you wanted to.